Do you have one or more Raspberry Pis and want to have an option on how to keep things up to date? Do you want to be able to manage your RPIs from any device on your network? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to use Cockpit to do just this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use Cockpit to control your Raspberry Pi. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an on flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is up, Uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video. That's how to use Cockpit to control your Raspberry Pi. First, what is Cockpit? Then we'll go over installing it. And then we'll kick the tires a little bit and show you how you can use it. And this will even help in a multi Raspberry Pi situation. What is Cockpit? Cockpit is a web-based GUI that will allow you to get to any of your Raspberry Pis. You don't have to use an app on a smartphone or a desktop. So really it's kind of a win-win. And it really gives you a lot of information for taking up very little real estate. So let's go ahead and switch over and let's get this one started. Now that we're logged in to the Raspberry Pi, let's go ahead and get Cockpit installed. And make sure you enter the dash Y just to keep things a little bit happier. Well, now that we've got cockpit installed, we actually need to get into it. But what we're going to do as an initial check is we can use the system control command as long as I get the initial S in there for that to work. And we can make sure cockpit is actually up and running. So it says active. That's good. And it is using port 9090. That is something also good to remember is if you already got another service on here that's using 9090, you're not going to be able to share that port. So you will either need to change the port of one of the devices or put a, one of the services on a different uh, Raspberry Pi or Linux system. Now we've gotten into this, so I just did HTTPS cockpit, which I've already got it in DNS, and then colon 9090. Now the good thing here is you can use your Raspberry Pi credentials, which is another reason to change your password. Make sure you click on the reuse my password, because that's going to come in handy later. So we'll click on login. There we go. It just had to decide it wanted to start. So this is what you're going to see when you bring it up. It's going to give you an idea of what's going on from a hardware standpoint. It gives you an easier way of looking at the logs in the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to see what's going on, and if you click on the number, it's going to go into a little more detail. Storage is going to show you how your SD card is doing. Again, if there's any errors, you should see something here. Now, you can do all sorts of things. You can bond. I'm not even going to go into that. Now, it says not available on WLAN, and there's a good reason why. Because when you first bring up Raspberry Pi OS, Wi-Fi is disabled. If we were to go out and go into Raspberry Config, we can fix that one. So we've got the accounts there. You can see all the services that are running once it comes up. And you can actually stop, restart. You get a, a lot easier access to some of this until you become more versed with Linux. And GUI is, is one way of doing it. Command line is nice to have when GUI isn't responding. Sometimes GUI may give you bad information. Software updates, if you haven't done any updates recently it is going to give you a list there we can tell it to check for updates wouldn't expect anything it's going to take a little bit here to get that done so if you don't remember sudo apt get update and upgrade and dash y and all the good stuff this is just a way to to get you up and running should come back here in just a bit and i'm not expecting anything because we just did the update okay so that's fine there and terminal it even gives you a way of getting an ssh session in there now application there are a whole host of things that you can do with this one. This is just to get you up and running to let you see what cockpit can do. There is the potential for making this multi Raspberry Pi. Again, you got to get into the hood a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to show you today what you're looking at. Now, if we go to dashboard, we can get a very high level view of what is going on. CPU network memory we're using well going by that we're not we only use tenth of what's there so that's network you can see what's going on disk io again this is a whole host of things of what you can look at so really having this 
as an option. It gives you a web interface. So if you saw my last video on the other option, these are just all options. You can see what's going to work best for you with the applications. They give you even more of a deep dive into something. And I'll show that in another video. But this is something just to get you up and running. See how it's going to make managing all your Raspberry Pis. Because if you're like me and I've got a few and I got a few more in the box I haven't even put in service yet, it's going to make it easier to keep them all up to speed. Something you want to make sure you do is go take a visit over to cockpitproject.org. This is going to give you even more information than what I've covered in the video today so you can see all the different possibilities and it's a list of applications is one of the things you can get into to see what's going on. There's Podman which apparently is going to replace Docker at least that's what the impression they've got kernel dump diagnostic reports so you can see there the sky is going to be the limit here as to what you can do this is a very expandable package from first look at it and it's something that's i'm either going to i haven't decided if i'm going to have a dedicated management cockpit server or if i'm put cockpit on each one of these because some services like to use 9090 so i'm trying to avoid having a conflict but in the meantime there's a lot of information to work with here and something that will serve you well as your use of and the number of raspberry pis you have increases if you're watching this on youtube you're going to see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or under content that youtube thinks you might be interested in if this video helps you or provides value please click on that like button thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.